Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and one of the weirdest, most evil YouTubers is one that I covered last week. And uh, it was a YouTube scenario where by the time uh, we got to it, by the time I made a video on it, I had already submitted it to YouTube, uh, basically tweeted at them on Twitter, and the whole channel was basically taken down. Uh, quick recap, it was a channel that regarded around hand caning, you know, punishment exercises, uh, exercises, all that kind of stuff. It was an Indian channel where the whole premise was you were at a school, uh, tuition, you know, some post sec, not post secondary, sorry, like a, like just just a school, you know, just a, just a village school. And one person and her merry band of children that she was teaching, she was just hitting them with like little hand canes, if you will, effectively punishing them on the internet for views. She basically ran what is effectively a YouTube red room where she would get viewer submissions of, hey, how do you how do you want to punish some of these fine little children? And they would give their suggestions. She would do them, and that was pretty much it. This channel was monetized on YouTube. And up until like we had drawn attention to it, YouTube actually took a human review at it and basically shut down the channel. Now, of course, you know, ever since then, I've been wondering how a lot of these things get passed. And as we all understand, most of these websites, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, TikTok, rely on algorithms in order to actually police their platforms at all. Simply because there's so much content uploaded at any given hour that you just can't have that many human beings. I know people are like, why can't YouTube just hire like tens of thousands of people? And I'll tell you this much right now. You could hire all the people you want in the world, but it's still not enough eyes to accurately cover every minute of content that constantly gets uploaded. I want you to think of it like this. YouTube is like the Hoover Dam, if you will, right? Imagine, all right, all that water flowing out of the dam. That's videos basically being uploaded. Now at the bottom, you're basically tasking people to put all those all those drops of water into a bucket to check if there's any, you know, problems in the water, so to speak, right? So people have to be at the bottom of the dam, grabbing all the water, checking it for impurities, and doing it so fast that uh, they can basically, uh, the water never touches the bottom of the ground. So when the water's falling from the dam, it never actually touches the ground at all because you have so many people who are checking every single drop of water. Now, if you think that's possible to understand, it's not. It really is not at all. And I know the analogy might be a little wild and the analogy might have some fault, call it out if you will, but that's generally the idea. The whole principle is there's so much content being fed into YouTube that it is a problem to, to, to basically moderate it effectively. But of course, YouTube and various websites reliance on algorithms tends to basically obfuscate or tends to like ignore work from other parts of the world. Now, anyways, when we first looked at this content, it was absolutely evil, deplorable shit. Now, of course, there's been a few corrections to the mess, all right? For instance, there have been people who have said, Muda, maybe it's not as bad as you think. Clearly, some of the children are laughing in the scenario, which was not the point of the original video entirely. Yes, while that first aspect I maintain is incredibly sick, the fact you have any children involved in stuff like this is wrong, period. But what's really wild is the comment section, and it's one thing that we're going to be getting to today, because it's still a problem and it has been a problem since 2019. The other minor concern I had was regarding an account that I showed. On the thumbnail I showed basically like one of the most heinous comments in the video of somebody just requesting more beatings, if you will. Now that account was by somebody known as CC Gaming. It's come to my attention that unfortunately some of the people who watched the video actually went to an account called CC Gaming as well and directed some form of bad messages to them as well, which is something I absolutely disregard. Anytime I cover videos like this or channels, never ever go to those channels. If you feel these channels violate YouTube community's guidelines, there is a functional report system built into every video. Right here, for instance, these three dots on any video. You can click on them, report them for a myriad of reasons to YouTube to examine later on their own point. You don't have to be a fucking vigilante on yourself. So, and of course, the profile picture that belonged to that account was completely different to the account that people had actually sent a message to, which blew me away. So I want to give apologies to CC Gaming as well, too. Now, when we first looked at that video last time, we looked at one channel. I think it was Asif's Vlogs, right? Right, tuition vlogs. Now, what she was doing in the comment section was basically putting in a bunch of hashtags. Now, those hashtags, since the video has been removed, were effectively just hand caning, punishments, murga, which is, you know, the, the chicken stress position that they were putting people in.
Now, one thing that you can find in YouTube is, no matter what, evil does not just stick to one channel. Evil sticks to a myriad of channels. Those entire hashtags took me to entire positions on YouTube that were auto-generated trends. So when you clicked on any of those things, you found things like hashtag Murha Punishment, which comes up to 890 videos across 176 different channels. Now, of course, each and every single one of these videos was not regarding just children. I want to make a distinction over here. There are a few different types of scenarios. There's the average tuition vlogs where kids are brought into the mix. But of course, there's also other channels that regard things such as uh, fetishes, if you will, too. There's also military exercises. So there's plenty of channels where they're apparently part of like a defense academy, where they're basically putting people through like, you know, defensive positions, you know, like military. I guess, I guess the Indian army must do a lot of like murha positions. So maybe, maybe that's like a common thing over there. But there's like generally three different types of channels. You've got kit tuitions, literal femdom shit, and then you've got like, uh, you know, Indian Army training crap. Of course, with ear pulling, you've got 488 videos across 217 different challenges. But beyond all the challenges and haha funny moments, there then you get very quickly into the whole punishment rabbit holes. It, it, that's where it literally leads to. It's the tuition stuff. That's where you get down to. And then there's requested videos, which again, if the comments are even more disturbing sometimes than just what these people are doing in the videos, if you could believe that. Look at some of these comments. You are real cruel and strict teacher. I love your dominated attitude. Thank you, she responds. It's so insane. Like, it's it's like you understand that this is fetishizing, right? Even just above it, they're literally asking for hand caning punishments by sticks. That's the weirdest request you'll ever see. It's the comments and the people that are commenting on this, requesting it, that are really, really sick. Some of these can be humor. You know, some of these can be skits in general. And it gets easier to figure out which ones are the skits, too. Of course, you've also just got hand caning, which is where the real depraved side exists. And thankfully, this counts less than 100 videos and channels. Still more than one, which is bad. So, of course, one of them was this fantasy channel, which is fulfilling your murga punishment and other fantasies with me. DM me on Instagram or mail me. Now, of course, in this, the video has been disclaimed. The video is made for entertainment purpose, only with proper consent of the person. No one was harmed in this video. Do not try this at home. Now, I want to state for the record, I am totally okay when it comes to content like this, okay? As long as it's not really breaking the YouTube TOS, like straight up nudity and sexual like policies, right? I don't know how much fetishes get into that whole situation. I mean, literally, you got things like femdon put into it and hashtag fetish dropped in. So I don't know where that falls on the YouTube TOS spectrum. Uh, I mean, then again, naked yoga was a thing for the longest time. Uh, when it comes to content like this, as long as it's between 18 plus year olds, it's not really anything of my concern. Concern. This is not on that same level. But of course, this is just one different thing, okay? I wanted to really bring this up, and I wanted to mention this because across all of this, it's not just kid tuition vlogs. It is generally sometimes adults doing fetish-related stuff or, you know, academy defense training shit. But in amongst a lot of these videos over here, you'll find some content which has 16,000 different like uh, views to it. Now this account has 13K subscribers tossed into it with about 121 likes. I, I don't know how organic a lot of these uh, interactions are. However, it really comes across to me that these videos are not only getting recommended all over YouTube, but they're probably being shared on things like WhatsApp or Facebook, if you will, too, just simply through an embed link. Now, of course, this channel is completely advertised. And of course, in the content over here, the mom is straight up hitting her child on the entire platform for two minutes. The kid feels pain. I have to block out the audio to this content simply because you can hear the kid getting absolutely hit too. You can actually feel you can actually hear the impact of the of the of the of the of the, of the little cane. And of course, the kid, while sometimes they come across smiling and everything, in certain cases, they definitely come across a little disturbed and a little distressed, which is just fucked to even witness, okay? Again, like, this is not, this is not okay content. I don't know where this falls on YouTube's child safety policies, but it's something we kind of have to discuss. I mean, if you look at YouTube's child safety policies here real quick that YouTube's really serious about, it's one of the reasons why I don't put any form of kids in my content at all, even if it's well within YouTube's TOS, because this is a very hard line TOS infraction you could make. So obviously you can't do sexualization of minors. Uh, harmful or dangerous acts involving minors. I think this may uh, come up to interpretation based on what you consider to be rough hand caning. But of course, infliction of emotional distress on minors 
Could be uh, with violence, if you will. Could be could be something tough. Misleading family content, which I'm sure a lot of the stuff falls into. But of course, let's go on. This is for YouTube to cover, not necessarily for me. Now, it really started to fuck with me here as some of these random channels have been popping up. Now, the last channel we looked at was about a thousand something subscribers, but this is around 845 subscribers that this channel has, and it can be some downright spooky looking material. Now, when I went to this channel and I immediately sorted it to like the most popular, this was pulling in 32,000 views six months ago, 16,000 views seven months ago, and of course, 16,000 views. Now for a channel that small, this is either getting recommended hard by YouTube's algorithm, or they're sharing the fuck out of this content on off-platform servers, like WhatsApp, like Facebook, in private forums, in direct messages with other random users. This is where it gets really absolutely spooky. Now, in a lot of cases, YouTube has actually given this the YouTube kids connotation. And I shit you not, if you look at some of these videos where she's got hand canning punishments of tuition, all right, YouTube kids has popped this into their algorithm. So now if you're like a parent and you downloaded the YouTube kids app, they could potentially come across this content. And of course, she just gives them random punishments throughout the whole thing. It's not as I would say egregious as the last person, Miss Asif of Vlogs, who literally like staged a lot of these punishments to happen on camera just for the views. However, this is still disturbing and completely wrong and shouldn't belong on the platform to begin with. It is, of course, one of the most fucked up little rabbit holes because when you actually get into the comment sections when they're available and apparently these videos don't fall into the YouTube kids algorithm for whatever reason, then you come across some really dark shit. In these comment sections, all right, what you can go down over here, just immediately scrolling, you'll find commenters who say, very nice video, beat slightly hard, literally asking that these, that these creators, that these content creators start beating the children even more. Now, if you read the, if you read the title, it says, Kisi ne yaad nahi kiya week name sabko pade dande, which basically means all the kids, you know, got beat because they didn't remember, um, I guess, whatever they had to do. And if you start looking more into it, please, high level hand caning, five no all students stat up position. And of course, she's liking all of these comments as well, too. She likes every single one of them. I don't know whether that's just her responding to it in some capacity, but of course, she's definitely not reading all of it. Like, ma'am, do strict hand hand caning. Murga, 10 minute tak banao murga punishment bahut kam deti ho aap murga punishment ki video jada se jada dano aap basically just put these kids more in a stress position and upload that content sabhi students ko murga banao puri video ho tuition video slap video please clean video upload karo uh, can we have a little higher quality like uh, you know, child red rooms if we will jesus christ nice video ma'am very strict teacher Nice video. I'm your big fan from Sri Lanka. Punishments remembers our school days. Please post face slapping also. So just start slapping these kids in the face, I guess. Now, of course, if you look at the actual content of the video, one thing to understand is clearly this is done in a village scenario. So this is not happening in an urban center where like, you know, actual law enforcement in India could even get to. Not that law enforcement in India is fucking reliable in any capacity, but you get the point. Girls and boys, both hips caning videos banal. They just make more videos of caning their hips at this point. This guy, this guy, the hand isn't doing anything for him anymore. Please upload hand caning punishment in Sardi without sweater, shirt, jacket, muffler. It's my request. So I guess like take off some of your clothes as well. Like keep, keep your Sardi on, but like get rid of some of your other clothing, please. Like this guy just want, like it gets to the point where this is like some weird, like punishment fetish play for a lot of these commenters. Boys and girls, equal punishment, very good. So at least this person actually prefers to have some equality in this mix too. Jesus Christ. So of course, in another room over here, you've got a bunch of the kids sitting in this like entire school with like, a, it's a classroom now, but of course you can imagine that it's not like, you know, a, an urban classroom, if you will. It's still very rural. So of course, ma'am, telegram ID send koro. So again, another example that these people are going to the off-platform side of the content, all right? They're basically funneling this through YouTube. We'll get to that in a little bit. That's the final stage. Here's one too. You got a ear bend and slap. Jesus Christ. Christ, man. Please upload palm caning. Again, it, it's it's like a weird red room, if you will, when it comes to a lot of these creators. Like, it, it, it literally just feels like some weird deep web red room that made it all the way onto YouTube, and it's just sort of sitting in obscurity on the platform. 
And again, when we got to the beginning of the video, I talked about moderation. Clearly, YouTube moderates content that's in, like, the first world, if you will, content that is in, like, you know, the languages that are primary uploads. Like, English, for instance, is probably the easiest to moderate, since that's what their artificial intelligence is trained on, versus, you know, languages like, I don't know, Japanese, for instance, right, where they may not be so trained on, or Hindi, if you will. And a lot of this content, which is coming from an emerging world, it's just access the internet. It's a weird scenario to get into, and clearly the YouTube moderation is not treated equally across the board. Had this kind of content existed on US sides of the internet, I'm sure it would have been taken down a lot faster and dealt with. But see, the comments were the most important parts of those videos, because it really seems like the actual audience to this isn't there to just like, you know, ha ha, there's like discipline being offered. A lot of these people just want to start seeing kids get beaten on the internet or kids getting like in punishments where violence is used. It's really sick, deplorable shit. Now, of course, YouTube actually had to deal with a lot of these comments. If you think these comments are sick, YouTube has been dealing with this since 2019. And back in 2019, YouTube did what is a knee-jerk reaction, in my opinion, to this entire thing, where they just disabled comments on almost any video that featured children whatsoever. Now, of course, I'll leave it to one YouTuber known as Jordan Matter that actually me, Nexpo, Mama Max, and Nick Crowley discovered when we were in Los Angeles and his videos were just recommended to us. Now, Jordan Matter has 12.4 million subscribers, and I guess he's what you call a family channel where, like, uh, he just basically, like, you know, records, like, him and his daughters and his son, uh, you know, in, in like... I guess you could say like wild family scenarios, okay? Like cheer versus gymnastics, music videos, my daughter's accident. It, 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 it's a totally different side of YouTube that I've, I, I've never really jumped into. But he got his comments shut down, and I'm going to leave him to explain what's going on. It's not his. No, no, not Jordan Matter. Not one of the largest family channels. All the other ones, yeah, they, they got some bad comments, but not mine. No, 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 everyone else's. I know, it also helps in the algorithm, but we'll, we'll save that for later. I'm just being an asshole. Now, of course, what happened was YouTube shut down their comments because there were predators who were literally sharing contact information after watching any of this content with kids. Now, of course, and again, YouTube shut down these comments, even on a family channel that was vetted and secured by YouTube, like Jordan Matter, versus even the 800 sub one where kids were getting gained. It didn't matter as long as you had minors, your comments were getting shut down. But of course, regardless of it, it seems like when you go to any mainstream platform, the biggest issue is whether you go to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, you'll always come across people who, you know, upload this content on the platform and it may not entirely be their fault. You can upload videos of your kids all you want. If it's harmless shit, it's harmless shit. But of course, when you get into the hand caning stuff and you start to get people commenting like we just saw earlier, what happens is those people all jump into the comment section pool. Those videos may get recommended on YouTube. They might, but they're probably getting shared on a third party website like Facebook, like Telegram, like, you know, Instagram, or just through a direct message service or through forums in general. And when you get into those scenarios, that's where these predators sit, sharing content that's even more disgusting that you can't upload onto YouTube at risk of it being submitted to actual like criminal, actual like law enforcement agencies and them hunting you down. They're sharing that kind of stuff around. These kids are probably unknowingly being shared on like forum posts, like direct messages between actual sick predators and sick creeps. And these kids, like th this is the thing. These people have created this like soft market and the soft market is basically being exploited off platform anyways and it's one thing that youtube needs to take care of this little dark evil rabbit hole before it actually becomes a problem for its platform look there are tons of fucked up things on youtube going on every day we've talked about animal abuse videos i mean shit we had content creators that were literally abusing and killing and harming animals uploading it onto youtube and some of those people still have a pass roaming around on the platform as it is from places such as south america and of course now you've got rabbit holes like like this. It's only a matter of time before any mainstream media service looks into this shit the way that I have and makes something really damning for YouTube. And, you know, at the end of the day, YouTube's been giving ample warning for this kind of stuff. So if they're not shutting down a lot of these trends, a lot of this content before it becomes a problem on their platform, then I can't blame another apocalypse from happening. At that point, it's literally on the site moderators themselves. It's on the actual platform. And it doesn't just go for YouTube. It goes for any platform out there with any normal TOS. This wouldn't be allowed on Twitter. This wouldn't be allowed on Facebook. This wouldn't be allowed on TikTok. This wouldn't be allowed on YouTube. This wouldn't even be allowed on shit like LiveLeak, I guess you could say. But of course, it's up to the platform in general. This has been one of YouTube's evil rabbit holes, unfortunately, getting worse. I said this last time when we looked at this stuff. Evil does not just stick to one channel. It spreads and propagates like cancer. 
and it's really up to YouTube to deal with that cancer before it becomes a larger problem for its platform. And not just a larger problem for its platform, these children need help. They need to have actual law enforcement actually analyze these channels, figure out where it's going on, and deal with this legally. Because at the end of the day, there are children being harmed and abused through this entire situation. And that's the fucking worst of it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar. I'm not even going to ask you if you like what you saw. It really is not that kind of a video. I am out.